Hi, this is Karen from White Willow. Today we are adding to our cold season products. We are going to make Slippery Elm cough drops. So these are just two ingredients, Slippery Elm bark, powdered, and also honey. I'm gonna make sure my hands are washed really good because we're gonna get right into it and make this doughy cough drops. And then you will see how easy this is. So let's get to it. So just real quick, I wanna go over what the benefits of um, slippery elm bark is. Um, it can help with fevers, wounds, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. It can help with sore throats, which is why we're making this today. And this is just the two products together. The Native Americans love this product. They actually poured it over their meat for, to preserve the meat uh, longer. I just am in awe of that culture because they really experimented with herbs and the natural things that are in your own yard and in the, in the woods that they wanted to see what it would help with. They found that it ha had great benefits for wounds. They found that it had great benefits for, for preserving meat. They found that it had great benefits for irritable bowel syndrome, and they had uh, great benefits for sore throats. So we also, I also make it into a tincture. This is actually ready, the date's 715, so it's been in alcohol since July 15th. So I can make this into a tincture, and it can also help with any of those, those diagnoses as well. You can also use slippery elm bark for balms because it can help with bruising or healing wounds. And a lot of the natural products can help with healing wounds. It's just amazing. But if you mix slippery elm bark with honey, you're golden on a wound. So make sure you put it on there, mix it together. The slippery elm creates like a mucus, um, which is why we're using it in, in a lozenger. Um, so it helps, you know, really coat um, your throat so that it helps, you know, eliminate sore throat or that agitation with dry coughs. So I'm going to add about one cup of this. I don't have a lot of slippery elm bark, so you really don't, you don't wanna add um, too much honey and then run out of your slippery elm bark or you won't have a good lozenger. So I'm just gonna put in here, and I'll bring the camera closer, maybe a cup and a half of slippery, of um, honey. And this is really good honey. Um, I love this honey, it's local honey. It's from Webb's on Colonial. Just grab a paper towel, add a little warm water to it. I just like to clean off my honey bottle because otherwise, you know, it can be a disaster. So I like to clean this off as I pour it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the camera in closer and then we can watch this messy, gooey mixture. You want to add your honey first with this, um, just because of the way it combines and blends together, it really is best if you add the honey first. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this over it. And at first I'm gonna use a spoon. At first I'm gonna use the spatula and I'm just gonna kinda start to mix this together. Now you want this to be a particular consistency. Um, you don't want it to be runny or loose, but you want it to be like a really pretty thick cookie dough. Um, so that is just kind of pretty and really runny right now. So we're gonna add some more Slippery Elm. It's kind of a pretty texture. It's kind of a caramel color. And I'm just making a small amount. I'll have to get some more Slippery Elm to make a larger amount. The nice thing about this is that you can take it if you make too much and you're like tired of rolling out cough drops. Um, you can freeze it and then you can go back and do it at another time. So just make what you need right now and then you can go ahead and freeze it and make it again later. But it just, it just has, it keeps getting a little thicker and a little thicker. Now what we're gonna do with this after we have it all 
put together well is we're going to um, put it on a cookie sheet. Actually, I use glass dishes. I just like glass dishes better. And I'm gonna put it in the oven at its lowest temperature. My temperature goes to 150. Some of them are 170 degrees. And um, we're gonna go ahead and just let it sit in there for like a day. Now they're gonna be a little sticky when they come out, which is okay. Um, they're gonna harden a little bit as they cool. Now you can keep these, um, you know, with you to go. Just know that as the temperature is hot and if it's warm outside, it will, um, it will start to melt a little bit because it is honey. So here's my other tincture. This is mullion. I know everything's backwards, sorry. My cough syrup that I made in a video the other day. So that's that's also a really good um, cough syrup, but it does have a good bit of alcohol in it. So if you're looking for something for your kiddos, this might be what you need, um, especially because the way the Slippery Elm coats the, um, the esophagus and just it coats your throat and it makes this mu mucusy um, like texture and really, really soothes you. Um, as always, you wanna make sure you take precautions with any herbs or anything. You wanna take a look at it and see if you know, it's irritating. Use a smaller amount um, if you're not sure if it can be bothersome to the child or adult. Um, there are no real tests saying that ch children can't take these. I mean, people give them to their kids often. Um, but again, maybe break it in half and just see how that feels with them. Um, slippery elm can be a little irritating to the skin to some people, so just make sure um, you know, you don't want to swallow something or, or have something in your throat that might be a little irritating to their skin. So if you try it, just use a small amount and just see if that's actually bothering them. We don't have a problem with it. We actually love them. Oh, this is thickening up pretty well. It's not well enough though, even though it looks like it is. it all out on the counter and then I clean it up because it makes a giant mess. I do want to add some slippery elm bark to the bottom of the pan. And if you remember like um, when you bought like those lemon candies that were hard and they had a coating over the top of them, um, that was to help them not stick together, not so much as to add sweetener even though it was really yummy. Um, but we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more to the bottom of this. We're going to press it out in this dish because if I try to press it out on the counter, which I've done in the past, it will stick to the counter and you will never get it off the counter. So I'm just going to kind of make this flat to some extent. I'm going to put it in the pan kind of poofing up a little bit, that's okay. Now you don't want these huge because you know you want them to be like a little lozenger size. So um, you want to make sure that you're not making them thick. I'm gonna flip this over, put that down there and press again. So I'm gonna leave this slippery elm coating on the outside, like I said, so when it gets to the point of putting them together and storing them, they're not sticking together, at least for a while, because they will stick together if the temperature changes or it warms up. 
And I don't know where you're at, but I'm in Florida and it is never gonna get cooler again because we've been really hot. Um, yesterday, I decided to go for a run and it was 95 outside. I literally stopped several times and like sat on the curb because it was just in the shade because it was, <laughs> my path is not that shaded. So be careful in the heat, but still we have a lot of things going around here, even though it's, it's hot outside. Um, we have, you know, people that are out sick from stomach issues or, um, colds or flus. So there's, there's a lot of things still, still out there, even though it doesn't seem like it's fall, it's fall. And it's going into that winter bug season where not bugs like Florida bugs, but bugs like flu cold bugs. Okay. Now I am adding a second dish just because when I start cutting this, it's going to be, I don't want them really that close together. So I'm taking my pizza cutter and I'm just going to make some nice little rows. I think I made that one too narrow, but and they don't have to be perfect. This is for your family, so. And you can see how I wouldn't want these just sitting there next to each other that close. So we'll separate them once I get the cross side. Just go ahead and make them across. I might have to cut a little, a few of them, a little more on the ends because they're not quite even. And these are probably a little bit big. Like, I don't know if you can see them, but they're a little bigger. Um, you want something a little smaller. You can roll these into balls, but ooh, that's messy. So I'm just going to take some of these and put them over here onto this pan. You can see what they look like, just little squares. So that is it. They are in the oven until tomorrow evening. And then we'll be able to take them out and just put them in a package. Um, they're great for sore throats. Remember, they're gonna have that powder on the outside, so it's gonna be a little uh, like taking in powder when you first put it in your mouth, but allow it to just sit on your tongue, let the moisture of your mouth kind of meld with it, and then just, you know, let it hang out in there until um, it dissolves and starts to coat your throat. And you will feel the difference, especially with the honey in it as well. So the honey actually adds a little bit of extra for the allergies and such in your area. So make sure you get a local honey. I just kind of wanted to show you the different texture. This is actually, if you can see it, it's the root of the slippery elm. So I'm, this is an alcohol. I'm not gonna actually make a tincture out of this today. Um, and it can actually add a, a benefit for your irritable bowel syndrome, for um, heartburn, for other things as well. So we wanna make sure that you, you know that there's many different ways you can make, uh, use an herb for helpful benefits to you. You can use it in a tincture, you can make it into a balm, so then you would leave it, leave it sit in oil for um, four weeks, six weeks, 
Um, you can add a little slow heating method to it in a crock pot, but with a really, really, really low setting and add some water to the bottom of it and it will progress that. You can't speed this up. You can't speed an alcohol tincture up. Um, there's two different time periods that pretty much are standard for tinctures. If it's a petal or a leaf, you can just let it set for four weeks, five weeks. But if it's a root, you need six to eight weeks. So this is a bark. So it needs needed a little longer. This was July 15th, so we're good to go on making this into tinctures and showing you the health benefits of that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of your slippery elm bark um, powder and honey um, throat lozenges. I hope that you use this recipe in your own home and know that natural remedies are just great. God made us a beautiful, beautiful country where we can just take advantage of the things around us and we don't need to go to the over-the-counter medications all the time that have carcinogens and petroleums in them. We can just make them ourselves, store them in a cabinet. Um, I've got the cough syrup. I've got all sorts of the elderberry kits. So go ahead and get busy. Start making stuff as usual. Like, share, comment on this video, and thank you for watching White Willow.